Welcome back to Becchia Ballistics. In today's video I'm going to cover the rifle that served the Italian army for over 60 years, the Carcano model 1891. I decided to split the video in two parts. In this one I'm going to talk about the technique and the different variants of the rifle and in part B I'm covering the ammunition and test shoot the rifle. So let's get started. For reasons I will explain in part B, I decided to cover most of the fundamentals using this model 9141. As you'll soon discover, the many variants produced through the years do not show any fundamental differences, so what you learn for this variant will be true for all the others. Also, keep in mind that I have a scientific background, not an historical one, so these videos will mainly cover technical aspects and I cannot consider myself an expert in the history of this rifle by any means. For this reason, I would really appreciate if you could add some of your personal knowledge on the topic in the comments. For now, let's reassemble the rifle. I just finished giving it a good clean from storage oil and while I'm reassembling it, you'll have a good opportunity to understand how it works. This is the firing pin assembly. I'm sliding it into the bolt body and positioning it in the unloaded configuration. Then I am pulling back the firing pin tail cap to compress the spring and then rotate it into the loaded position. At this point the bolt is in its open configuration and can therefore be inserted into the gun action. To allow the bolt to be inserted or extracted the trigger needs to be pulled to disengage the bolt retaining system. As you've probably already noticed, the bolt is of the very common double lugged head 90 degrees opening type and the firing pin spring compression is given during the opening rotation through the use of a helical cam guide. Upon closure of the bolt, the trigger sear engages the firing pin tail and releases it when the trigger is pulled firing the cartridge. The safety is integrated in the bolt itself and its engaging unloads the firing spring, rendering the gun totally safe. Regarding the ammunition, it is kept in this unremovable magazine which has a capacity of 6 rounds held together in an end block clip. A spring loaded arm pushes the cartridge column up while the clip is held in place by a retainer hook. The cartridge follower is thinner than the clip though, so when the last cartridge is chambered the clip itself is no longer held up by anything and falls through the opening in the magazine. This not only allows to get rid of the empty clip, but also informs the user that he only has one shot left after which he will have to reload by inserting another end block clip. If the user wanted to unload the gun or reload a partially depleted magazine, he could do that by pressing the button located in front of the trigger while holding down the remaining cartridges. This action disengages the retainer hook and allows the clip with the remaining cartridges to exit from the top of the magazine. The action is held in the stock with a conventional couple of screws and a front recoil lug, while the barrel is additionally constrained to the stock by two barrel bands with the front one equipped with a bayonet lug. The type and position of the barrel bands varies from one version to another though. The rifle is equipped with open iron sights with double V-notched rear sights. The fixed one is set for 300 meters of distance, while the adjustable one can compensate for longer distances and was intended for volley firing. The shape of the rear sight is another item that varies from one version to the other. In part B I give a detailed description of the 6.5x52 cartridge used by most of the Carcano rifles, while now I'd like to only point out a peculiarity of the design which, as far as I know, wasn't used anywhere else. The case head had a circular depression with a matching depression on the bolt head, which had the main function of reducing the area of the case head in contact with the bolt head, therefore increasing the contact pressure. This was thought to be helpful in reducing the escape of gases from the primer pocket. In case some gases were to make it through, they were ducted through the annulus to a vent machined in the bolt from where they could escape out of the high pressure zone. I don't know if this expedient was really necessary, what is sure is that contemporary ammunition no longer has the groove on the case head, but this shouldn't interfere too much in the phenomenon since the depression in the bolt head is enough by itself to increase the contact pressure. On the other hand, the gas vent ground in the bolt also causes the presence of a weak spot in the case head and in case of overpressures this is generally where the system fades first. The case head ruptures and pieces of brass are shot backwards. Not really a pleasant eventuality, but that only happens if maximum pressure is exceeded. In today's engineering we would just say that the design is not fail safe. Anyway, have a look at this hole, do you know what this is for? Let me know in the comments. Now let's have a look at the different variants made through the years. I already put on the rack the model 9141 that you just saw in its place and I will start from the bottom adding the other variants starting from the oldest, without claiming to be exhaustive. 
The oldest one is the proper model 1891 rifle with the longest barrel and double rear sights. Then you can see the Special Troops Model 91 TS carbine with 17.7 inch barrel and simpler sights and a different violent lug. These carbine versions were called Moschetto. Then we go on to the Model 9124 Infantry Carbine, which was obtained by shortening the 1891 rifles pretty much to the same length of the already existing Moschettos, and was a way of reusing the old long rifle. Notice that it keeps the large rear sights of the original rifle. Then there should be the 9128 grenade launching version, which unfortunately is not available in this warehouse, and after that we get to the massively produced Model 9138, of which you see the rifle version here. This version was initially supposed to use a different calibre, the 735x51, but with the onset of World War II, the Italian army decided to switch back to the more traditional 6.5 cartridge, and very few of the 7.35 calibre rifles saw combat. The one you're looking at is the 6.5mm version, but I will talk extensively about the cartridges, barrels and shooting in part B. Again, the 9138 was specifically designed to be made using as many salvaged parts as possible coming from the older versions, and as such the shorter carbine versions were recycled as well, giving birth to the short Moschetto 9138, of which you can see the cavalry variant here. The most obvious difference with the previous models is the much simpler rear sight and an adjustable 200 meters fixed sight. Between the 9138 rifle and carbine, I put the 9141 rifle, the last iteration of the design, that was extensively produced during World War II and mainly intended to be used on the Russian front. As you can see, the solutions introduced with the 9138 variant were abandoned, and the rifle resembles much more the original Model 1891 rifle, with its long overall length, the straight bolt handle and the use of the double rear sight, with a fixed notch set for 300 meters and an adjustable one that goes up to 1000 meters. Finally, after the 1943 armistice of Italy, another, last version was made. The occupying German forces ordered in 1945 the conversion of some of the existing rifles and carbines in the 8mm Moser calibre, and you can see an example in the upmost position on the rack. That is a 9138 carbine converted to chamber the 8mm Moser. The most visible change regards the two pins in the stock used to reinforce it against a stronger recoiling German cartridge, and a few others had to be made to the action in order to handle the larger cartridge. The fixed magazine now only holds five rounds using a different clip, and a few parts had to be machined out to make room for the bigger ammunition, decreasing the metal thickness in many points and hence the strength of the weapon. Anyway, this concludes part A on my excursus on the Carcano rifles. In part B I will cover the ammunition and barrels used and I will also shoot a lot with it, both in first person and third person view, also evaluating the accuracy. If you like this video let me know by clicking the like button, and if you are new to the channel subscribe to see more content like this. See you very soon with part B, bye!